carpet. The moment you've all been waiting for. You what? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, that hit the spot. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Gosscast with myself, Alexandra Ryan, and Kendra Becker. Um, another shout out to our sponsors this season. The Gosscast is brought to you by Irish owned CBD company Greenheart CBD. Started by Paul Walsh and Mark Canavan, the brand has already become a huge hit, even getting a mention in Vogue magazine. And as always, on Gosscast very important you can log on to greenheartcbd.ie right now where you can choose from the highest quality cbd oils which are homogenized in the most natural and chemical free method all with full traceability from seed to shelf seriously important while they can't make any medical claims as cbd oil is considered a food supplement many have used cbd oil to treat and help with issues like anxiety and depression right now green heart cbd by the way are running a 12 days of christmas promotion on their instagram where they're giving away products every day so make sure to check that out and for more information about cbd oils and the projects in which green heart cbd are working on you can visit their website greenheartcbd.ie woo very excited about this episode very excited so basically today we want to chat about all the big things happening in tv land right now mm-hmm. and i feel like it's mainly going to become about sex in the city yeah dun, dun, well dun, and just dun, like that dun, dun, dun. so i was just saying to kinder before we started i rewatched every single episode only recently of like every sex in the city episode ever. and can i just say i also watched the movies oh well you have to finish it off because so I have the movies to. are such a jump from the such a joke show. but yeah <laughs> yeah also such a jump but i had to ah uh, no 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 the Abu Dhabi one I still can't get over that but it's like talk about like cultural issues and the way they went on about like the women wearing like I was just a bit like wow but I was just saying to Kendra there when I was in college so I must have been 17 I was 17 in my first year in college um me and my friend used to I used to always stay in her on campus like gorgeous uh accommodation because it was like right beside our lecture hall so we'd Mm -hmm. like get up in the morning and go and she had an actual do you remember it was really cool I don't know if you had this because you're so much younger but you know the TVs with the VCRs in them yeah yeah. so like she had one of those and I yeah. had one of those when I was younger as well and it was like so cool and she had the VCR like the full box out of every single episode and we used to watch it every night we used to talk about all the characters we used to break it all down so that was when I was 17 that was 15 years ago which makes me feel old <laughs> you're wow. like bringing up my age bringing up my age again <laughs> but now at the age of 32 watching it it's like a whole different show. Yeah. And that's the thing I love about Sex in the City, that every episode has a different lesson. And it depends what you're going through. You could be dating someone, you could be single, you could have just broken up with someone, and every episode will have a different message for you. Mm. I like I have we'll go through like our kind of ups and downs sex and city, right? Because I I think everyone has like a complicated relationship with Carrie. Yeah. I think so. Like but you I love think... her, but you also hate her. Yeah. There's like, but I think all the characters are kind of like that. They kind of bring it into mm. the new show as well. Like, and I kind of like the way they do that. They don't yeah. make them that you want to love the character. Yeah. They kind yeah. of give them Because no real human has no flaws. Yeah, exactly. The thing that used to always get me about her, and now I understand it more. So I mean the different times when you watch it. But I was watching mm. it this time. Her relationship with Big was something so similar that I'd gone through that I was like, I, I actually get now why she was so erratic, why she kept going back to someone who wasn't good for her. Like, whereas years ago, I was like, what is she doing? Just yeah. go and choose Aiden. Yeah. But yeah. then this time I was like, no, I understand it. But still, as a character, she is majorly flawed. Like the fact that she's mm. writing this column about all she basically wants is to find love. And then she has it in a good few times and she's like, nah don't yeah. want it and the relationship with big see i do still have a problem with with that that they ended up together because i don't know how realistic it is that an avoidant emotionally unavailable man like john that's his name john preston yeah, john preston would actually end up marrying carrie like most men like mm-hmm. that like it's what happened kind of earlier on with natasha when he married her and they broke up i feel like those sort of men never actually settled down so i've always been a little bit unsure about that storyline and i think everyone on earth is still pissed off that she didn't choose well Aiden. they kind of brought it into the movies though the way he obviously yeah. like tries to call off the wedding and stuff. obviously He's... major spoilers here if you haven't seen sex in the city or and just like that or the movies like yeah, i mean the movies away. were released like years, years ago. ago so if you haven't seen them it's your fault i liked the much. first movie 
But I yeah. also didn't like it's the, the nostalgia of it though. Like yeah. I think it could have been absolute shit, and everyone would have been like, "Woo!" I could have just been like, like it was good. An episode of them eating like mac and cheese, and we'd be like, oh "Yeah, my God, be like, I love the efforts." <laughs> but uh, what really annoyed me about that. Uh, movie as well this annoys me in a lot of things so you know like in normal people as well like mm-hmm. obsessed I hate watching characters on screen not being able to emote or say things yeah and like main... watching your Puck Connell in yeah. normal people and just, be like just Child say it. It. <laughs> you want to be with her but like you know in the Sex and <gasps> City so movie it's like they get her and Big get back together just because they see each other they hug and I'm like why the fuck weren't you just texting then like I don't understand yeah. nothing actually got resolved she was just like, and just like that, you know, it made no sense. I just jumped in his arms. I'm like, why did you spend the last year mm. of that movie not with him then? If yeah. you, like things like that really annoy me. And I hate when people don't say how they feel. And she did do that a lot with the Aiden relationship. But when I was rewatching this series again, there were so many things that stood out to me. Like, you know, when she's with Big, she smokes. Like she does a lot of bad yeah. things yeah. when she's with him. Obviously they had the affair on Natasha. She lied to all her friends. And then he's the guy she ends up with. Mm. Yeah. It like, is hard to kind of look at it in that way. I just don't think in real life that would happen. Although I said this to my mom and she mm. was like, but you know what, that is life. Sometimes you end up with the people maybe you shouldn't. Like, as in sometimes you, like she obviously never had a family. Like she went down that route of like living in this penthouse. But see, I don't know. I just didn't buy it. I still kind of don't buy it. Even when you're watching yeah. it just like that, I felt like, I just don't know if he's the type that would be like, hey kid. Still. Is yeah. he not just like, I don't know, because remember in the movie, the second movie, he wanted to take the break. Mm-hmm. Like two days a week, you can yeah. go to your apartment. Like She was like, sorry. That's more John Preston. That's yeah. the vibe. Because he is like a bad, he's mm. like essentially a bad boy. Like that's what he was like in the series. I think I always thought previously he was just a bad guy. Now through my own situations and just learning like about remember I told you about that book anyone listening you have to have to download this audiobook I or read it I still have not any um, which is called Attached it's so good so it basically says that every person falls into three different categories of uh, relationship attachments so there's the secure which is like someone who's just in a relationship if it breaks up it breaks up then they get another one you're never really hearing much about it there's never really much drama if they have a girlfriend and she's out all night with her friends, they're not like worried, like, oh, she's going to meet someone else. Yeah. Then you have the anxious attachment style, Ali Ryan, um, where you're like constantly worried. <laughs> well, not constantly, but like you're... In a pit of worry all the time. In a pit time. of worry all the time. <laughs> no, just like you're unsure. Only if you end up with the next category, though. If, I, if an anxious person is with a secure person, for example, Carrie and Aiden. Yeah. That's like a positive situation. Mm-hmm. You know, like you feel at ease. She's not worried if he loves her or not. She was never worried if he was going to cheat on her or leave her mm-hmm. for someone else. But with Big, because he is the third category, my favorite category apparently, is the avoidant. So that's the sort of person who only goes so far. You know, they'll never be that emotionally available to you. Like they'll yeah. date you, but they may never marry you or they'll sleep with you but then they don't really want to date you it's that kind of real detached and that's what big was yeah and in the book it was so interesting they say that anxious and avoiding people are constantly attracted to each other it's like the most basic relationship in the world is anxious and avoidant and together it's obviously horrendous because if you're an anxious person who isn't sure if someone loves you and then they aren't able to show you that they love you that's literally carrying big yeah and like every season, every episode, she was upset, pretty mm. much. And I remember, I can't remember which episode it was, but do you remember this episode where Carrie's like telling Miranda Biggs back in town and she's like, I can't do this with you anymore. Do you remember that episode? Yeah, and it's like where she kind of keeps, it's falling into the same kind of traps yeah. all the time. And Miranda's like, I'm not going to be here for you this time if you cry yeah. to me again. And I remember again when I was younger, I've totally definitely had situations like that me. with you. With me, I know. <laughs> I like, am the Miranda in you're this the situation. Miranda. I'm the ultimate Carrie. Like, I'm saying oh, I hate her, are. but I literally yeah. am Carrie. But I remember when I was younger agreeing with Miranda, being like, that's a joke. But then when I was watching it, I felt for Carrie. I was like, they don't get it. Like, it's hard. But definitely as a viewer watching it, you're like, why? So this is the thing. I like the characters, like how they develop and stuff like that. But I wish the writers didn't put them together in the end. Because mm. I just think that anxious avoidant dynamic now obviously it can and it kind of plays into the whole thing that like nice guys 
really do finish last. <laughs> they literally finish <laughs> last. Like Which shouldn't be true. I know. Like literally after our cheaters episode last week. Like, <laughs> I know. The we thing were like, is, all though, these men are dickheads. I always felt like Aiden wasn't an annoyingly nice guy. Like I thought he no. was still a bit of rough. He was tall. He had Not. his own business going on. Like he still had it going. He wasn't mm. like... I don't know. And I remember I literally only, because I only watched it so recently, you know the episode where they move in together and he buys the building and all that and then she like doesn't wear the ring anymore she's wearing it on her. I was just like, that's so mean. So mean. And then she's like, I just guess I'm not the marrying kind. It's like, all you like, want is to get married. But she's literally being the avoidant of I that know, situation. This is what's weird. This so is why like, this book attached is so good. Because they do flip it around. Like So like if you've been in a really bad relationship, so let's say Carrie and Big, when someone like Aiden comes along, she becomes avoidant yeah. because she's so emotionally scarred from what happened with him. But the ultimate, the good thing about the book Attached, which honestly is so good, is they say that like you can change your type. So you can become secure, but they do suggest that like an anxious person should date a secure person mm-hmm. to like make yourself more secure. They say that avoidant people could become secure. So basically everyone's goal is to become secure. So when I look mm-hmm. at the relationships on the show, I never would ever say Carrie and Big were secure ever. Mm-hmm. I think I don't really think Miranda and Steve either. There's a I think he's quite an anxious attachment yeah. style with Miranda, but I do love even Sha- just looking at him like gives me anxiety. <laughs> Why? Like he just looks so anxious uncomfortable all, time. all the he's like, time. I'm Steve. I know. It's like oh my god, Steve, I, relax. <laughs> I did love that storyline though because he was like the barman you ride at the end of the night, but yeah. actually turned out to be this lovely really good guy and you remember Miranda was just like you don't need to call me again it's fine he's like I want to call you and she's yeah, like she's what like, oh <laughs> it does make me feel better watching the show though because sometimes like when you're single as fuck and you're like why is this happening and then you watch the show <laughs> and literally every episode something doesn't work out and you're like yeah this you're like the that way is... things go and like we can't even say oh it's like modern dating it's literally been like this for years like how old is the show 25 years yeah is it yeah that's the weird thing about rewatching it again. Like you get new takeaways, even though it's old. And it's really interesting. Like everything's like, you left a message on my machine. I'm just like voice notes. That's yeah, what that is. That's the a, modern yeah. day voice note. <laughs> but it's so funny when they start getting cell phones, they're like, do you, do you, hello? It's like seven hours to like open their phone. I'm like, and pagers. Like yeah. there's a lot of throwbacks yeah. in it. Um, But yeah, I love Charlotte though. And I loved her storyline. And do mm. you know about her like real life situation? Kristen Davis. Not really. I haven't properly read into the whole thing, but I've seen like certain things about Snippet. it. Yeah. So like I obviously when I do deep dives on people when I'm into shows like this. So mm. I re I just started looking up Kristen Davis and she ended up adopting herself. So mm. she adopted two children, two yeah. black children, which apparently was a big drama because remember I was saying to you she was on Red, Red Table, Table Talk, Talk with yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith who kind of questions the idea of white people adopting black children, which I found odd. But anyway, she did the whole episode and she was like explaining that she was in these relationships and none of them were kind of leading towards where she wanted. So she decided to adopt on her own. And I was like, God, it's so close to the story in the show. Like obviously Mm. she got married in it, but like there was a while there where she was just like, what am I going to do? And I also loved about her storyline too, is when she got married um, and then it didn't work out and then she was divorced I just thought that was so good because mm. sometimes life is not a fairy tale where you yeah. just get married and everything's great yeah exactly do you have any like fond memories of the original season see because it started when I was like an and actual baby <laughs> <laughs> everything starts in your nappy on this podcast <laughs> yeah. I'm like when were you born so I actually haven't now I used to watch like sporadically different episodes because yeah. remember when they were on was it E4? Paramount or something was it E4? I can't remember what channel, but they were on actual channel. television. Oh no, actually, was it Comedy Central? That yeah, were, Paramount, it, yeah, Comedy Central, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would watch kind of random episodes on that, like but I've school. never watched it like start to finish because it would have Still started ballgame. years before. So do I you have now TV? That. Yes, okay. I need to So you need it. to do it. Yeah. I actually already rewatched this at the, the first lockdown. Mm. Actually, do you know what? It was the weeks before. Remember, I was in my own lockdown because so they thought I had the mumps. Oh, That's yeah. when I rewatched all the Sex in the City. So, I, But still, I'm telling you, watching it this time, it's totally different. Yeah. And you do have to watch it back to back. It's so good. Even like the final series where she goes to Paris. You know, that whole drama yeah. where she gets I, Yeah, I remember those series more. I don't really remember the early seasons and as much. And the fashion. Oh my God. So we were talking so about this. Good. We were talking about the revival of the early noughties. 
when you watch it back, you're going to see so many things that are back in style. Oh, and really? like the sh- Yeah, and the shoes, the shoes, the, the Monona Blahniks, the Jimmy shoes. Like, I could not be more interested in buying shoes now. And I'm not a shoes person, but after watching it, I'm like, do I need a pair of Monona <laughs> Blahniks? Do, do, I? do I but I remember thinking it was so unreasonable it's like in Friends the way they're in that rent controlled apartment but they all barely have a job Same yeah like how did Carrie really afford she'd all be like, shoes and she was in Mr. like Mr. Big put me in a bad mood so I maxed out my credit card and then she's like I'd no fare for the taxi and I'm like how did you just buy $400 shoes though <laughs> where is the money coming from who yeah, gives you where? a credit card yeah uh, and then she's like writing three words per week or or three words a half an hour for Vogue or something and you're like yeah. how, how and like she? how did she afford her apartment it's just yeah but then rent control in America is like the dream like you can have apartments for like $900 a month for the rest of your what? life that's what that rent control is yeah that's the same with the friends apartment they mention it in oh. the show so basically in, in America if you have a rent control apartment it means when you sign up for the lease that's It'll the only that, rent you pay forever oh but gosh. if a building goes co-op which is what happened in Carrie's one mm-hmm. remember that's when there's like a board and they change all the prices and all that stuff but if you're in like um, what's it called again I have already forgot the term rent co-op. control oh rent, rent control. control yeah yeah. literally I know people that live in New York in rent control apartments and they're paying like $700 and it should be like four and a half grand oh my god I'm so jealous. it's normally when there's like older landlords they just yeah. that's the deal they like do in them. the lease but obviously if they leave then they can up the price so that's I I was because I always wondered about Carrie and then in one of the episodes she said something about rent control and I yeah, was like you're like alright but still yeah. like I'd say her closet alone is two and a half grand to live in e- easily <laughs> in yeah. New York yeah have you did we go down that street that time we went for New York Fashion no, Week no we didn't no it's down by um where the Freedom Tower is it's that oh, side yeah, of New yeah. York yeah but like it's mad I just like went for a walk around there. And that really famous bakery is there too. You know, that one that's in loads of the episodes. Magnolia? Yeah. Yeah. That's there as well. It's also, we did go to the other one, didn't we? Yeah, we didn't go to that particular no, one. we, but went we to did go one. to a Magnolia bakery. So there's one there. But every, like, I was only there for like 15 minutes and like every five seconds. There, like someone lives there. Yeah. Like, but every five seconds there's there someone taking photos. But isn't there a city tour? Dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah. I've never and done there's that. like a bus tour. But even it's so funny, like when I went to New York the first time, I remember I recognized places from Gossip Girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like I was with my friend who's from there and I was like, oh, there's the Opera House and there's that hotel. And she was like, how do you know? And I was like, Gossip Girl. <laughs> like you learn so much from watching TV and with Sex in the City I'm the same I actually thought of Gossip Girl when I was watching the first episode of And Just Like That because Lily was in like a kind of school uniform mm. and it looked like the Constance uniform You're like from XOXL. Gossip Girl I was like does she go to the same school so we have we, we have to talk about And Just Like That so yeah. I I had reservations about the comeback only because I didn't like the movies like they mm. were grand but I felt like they were a separate entity from the show because I feel like the show has a cult following like I said there's lessons in every episode you just take yeah. so much from it so I was really like how are they going to do this and obviously I feel bad for the creators and the cast because for the last year they've been followed around so like everyone's been trying to guess why is Carrie kissing that guy why are they all in black does someone die like every yeah. week it was like a Samantha coming back what's happening so I was unsure about it but my but they, expectations were blown like I thought the two episodes were brilliant so like before we go any further if you haven't watched them do not watch Turn this off. or listen to this like because we're ahead. going to spoil everything so spoil the shit out of it. um I loved it I thought it was so so good yeah. I kind of like you I wasn't really sure what to expect and like we had seen so many paparazzi shots yeah. of things that were happening but they did say that they filmed fake scenes I to know, throw people off which I love which is such a clever move but I, I so again spoiler so don't listen I just knew Big was gonna die mm. like I've known this since they were bringing it back because I remember they were talking about bringing it back and then they filmed a funeral scene really early into the shoot yeah and people thought it was Samantha. I just knew. I was like, no, Big is going to die. Because what is the show without Carrie being single, trying to figure out mm-hmm. life, trying to figure out love? Yeah, the and last I, single girl in New York. Like, yeah. literally. And I also thought, in fairness, what I've always liked about the show and the writer um, is that Michael they... Patrick Ma- King. Michael Patrick King. Is that they are really good at, like, making things realistic. Like I was saying with Charlotte, mm-hmm. like, she kind of found her Prince Charming, then it didn't work out. Yeah. Samantha was, like, having the best life, then she got cancer. Like, they're very good at being real. And I remember thinking if Big dies and she's a widow, it would be such a good storyline because mm. so many women that do find their perfect man and then they die. Like yeah. that's what happens in life. So I kind of thought that would be really good. So anyway, since 
the show has come out, obviously Michael Patrick King has said, literally no one wanted to sign on unless something, something like big. that was going to happen. Yeah. Like, something big. Something big. <laughs> like that he literally died because they needed something new about the yeah. show. Um, and I can kind of see a few simmering storylines underneath. I don't know if you noticed all these things. I've noticed, I think uh, Miranda. Miranda has a drinking uh, problem. Yeah. yeah. And they've done it so subtly. That's why it's such mm. a good show. Like she's not falling over the place drunk, but no. she's like in the bar 15 minutes before it opens. Yeah. At the funeral, she's like getting, a scotch getting the scotch in. So I think that's going to be very interesting mm. to follow. I also think with Charlotte, I think her younger daughter might be non-binary or there's mm, going to be some yeah. issues around her gender. And it's just so funny the way they have it done where Lily is the one, the adopted child is like exactly like her. Mm. And then her natural child is quite different. So I thought that was a really mm. interesting storyline as well. Um, But yeah, I also, I don't know if you noticed this, when Carrie was doing the podcast, the team behind it, there was an absolute ride of a man. Did you see him? Only for Oh his, yeah, and he was just ran. They didn't really acknowledge no him. He was just standing He's there. He's obviously going to be a love and dress. I'm, I know it. Like, yeah. why was he so hot sitting in the back? It was like, <laughs> why are you standing why are there you so, so hot? hot? <laughs> like, things like that don't happen for no reason in Sex yeah. and City. But it was such a split second. I remember being like, Big's going to die. She's going to get with him. I mm. literally thought that. Um, and then Big's death. We need to talk about that. Yeah, like I completely agree with you. I I don't think had something like this not happened in the first or second. What would episode, the show be about? Yeah, like and I think it made it interesting. I think if it had come back and it was all like, oh, the girls are all so happy and they're in New York and they all have their husbands, blah blah. blah it like, would be boring. <laughs> yeah. It would just be like, oh, I think people would still watch it for like nostalgic purposes. Yeah, but I think this has made it a fresh and exciting show. And everyone and you're wants like, to know. Oh my god. Big's dead. We have to actually talk about the scene though because yeah. I feel like it's a real Kate and it's like Rose and Jack moment on the Titanic mm. where it's like you could have fit on the door though. Yeah. Like I feel like he definitely, definitely did not have to die. Yeah. Like the, I know you did a piece on it on Goss this week about that cardiologist yeah. who really didn't, doesn't like sex in the city. <laughs> in the quotes he's like who? Sarah Jessica Parker? <laughs> Sorry, we're, so we're referring to an article the Vulture did yeah. about like should Carrie have called 911? Would it have made a difference? Yes. And this cardiologist basically said it would have. She, she would, have, would have had time. Yeah. Or else he, and it's actually a good point. He was like, had she known CPR, like he definitely would have been saved. Yeah. Like, so it's important to learn CPR. Probably. I know. You think they would have maybe, and I, I said it on Twitter as well. I was like, her wardrobe probably worth half a million. They don't have one defibrillator in the face. <laughs> yeah. He literally has a known heart condition. Yeah. And then he's like smoking yeah, cigars. Yeah, such a storyline in the show. Yeah, that he got the... But it was interesting because in that vulture piece, they time how long it would have yeah. taken her to get back to the apartment. Um, and they and actually I was at a lunch yesterday and we were talking about this, about him dying of a heart attack. And uh, one of the guys at my table was saying that uh, his brother... Yeah, his brother woke up one night and his wife had had a heart attack in bed. Oh like gosh. she was dead, like literally dead. Oh God. And he like resuscitated her, tried and tried and tried. They rang the ambulance. The ambulance was like getting lost. He's like, what I do? So he was so tired from doing the CPR. He got his next door neighbor to come. They started doing the CPR. She like died twice on the way in the ambulance. Mm. But anyway, when she got there, like she's fine now. Like she's yeah. alive yeah. because he resuscitated her. Yeah. Like I, it's weird that she was just like, John. And then just yeah. kind of slow and then moved him in this weird position. He probably like moved Yeah, he, she was like drowning him in the like, shower. He he was sitting like, up was Sorry. probably better for the blood flow. She's like, let me just lie you on your side. Yeah. But the cardiologist said like nowadays, so like I'd say 30 years ago or 40 years ago, or go or whatever mm. someone had a heart attack like they were probably more likely to die but like things are so advanced now yeah. he was like we can bring people back like, yeah people can so die he was like you know back. had she called 911 like she definitely and would have saved him they also put defibrillators in your heart now so like yeah it shocks you back alive if you just <laughs> die like it, yeah. it can happen all the time yeah so that was the only thing because I think their writing is so intelligent. I'm like, what happened there? So Chris Noth, he actually did a new interview with Vogue and he kind of explained the whole thing. And He's he, like, I'm still alive. He was basically, and he actually said it this way, he was like, it was their Bonnie and Clyde moment. So he was like, you know, when she basically knew that he was going to die. So she was like, I'd rather take the time. To give him a little hug. To like, yeah, like it's so hold stupid. him while he's dying. Hold him and resuscitate him though. Like do she a bit of both. didn't know she spent Give him a little schnog like. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? She spent too much money buying shoes instead of getting an LCD. And then the shot lesson. of the shoes in the water. I was like, that is not. Sorry. Like, that. 
really pushed I know me it was over the sad edge, but though. also like he's in the shower dying like yeah. the shoe is but fine. like I think it was a good shot though the way they put that I also in. knew he was gonna die in that moment because she was like what are you doing he's like just looking at you kid I was like well you're obviously gonna die I know and she you're was being wearing, too nice, the wedding wearing, wearing the wedding shoes and he was I, there puffing on a cigar like yeah. mere hours away from <laughs> I'm about to go on my peloton <laughs> Like, like this is the other thing like this is why I feel like their relationship was always unequal if I was with a man who had cardiac issues and in his 60s he was smoking cigars and jumping on bikes I'd be like no mm. like you can't eat rich food you need to do that like it's like there was an unequalness in their relationship where Big just did whatever the fuck he wanted to do yeah I think it kind of the way the fact that he didn't go to Lily's recital I, I was know. a classic big like classic that but he didn't classic go classic avoidant sort of behaviour yeah. they never want to be in the groups with people yeah. like remember when they were I don't know if you remember the episode where she wants big to meet all her, her friends mm. and he's like oh I just don't want to go why? and she's like devastated and then they're just about to go to the table and she's about to tell everyone he's not coming and then she like turns around in slow motion and he's there and like he's all wet from the rain and he's like Carrie and then she's like oh and I'm like no that's not a good narrative to teach people you shouldn't people. have to like force them like to someone go. showing up for you shouldn't be this massive knight yeah. shining armor moment like mm. that should be your normal day to day life with someone yeah. that's why the relationship troubles me a bit because and I get it I've been there a lot but like watching it play out now I'm just like mm. Mm. and at the funeral I thought it was really funny you know that character who's there being like does everyone not remember he was a fucking dickhead to her I was <laughs> yeah. just like yes I was like I'm interested to see like what the plan is for her in the season yeah. I feel like I know it's gonna happen with the other characters but um, I'm interested to see like is she gonna be dating in her 50s basically and like Aiden's gonna come back at some point it's been confirmed that he is going to be in it now in what capacity oh we don't God. know maybe his but wife like, dies imagine they got back together that's what I would like to see happen in the end she ends up with Aiden yeah I think oh that would be so oh my god cute. could it happen but I feel like that's a controversial opinion I feel like it's controversial like and because she kissed him in that that's another thing that wrecked my head about her when she did that call to him in Abu Dhabi mm. I, she was so annoying and over the top and he was like I'm in work yeah <laughs> he's like fuck off and then she came home and he was like you're gonna wear this to remember you're married here's a ring I'm like this is a weirdly yeah. dysfunctional relationship it's very weird I thought that was so odd God, will she end up with Aiden? I don't feel that in my gut now. I think he'll definitely come back, but maybe... I think, he, yeah, he's... Uh, well, we obviously know he's going to be in it. Will he be coming capacity. back to give her solace more so? The podcast lad is, is definitely getting the right. <laughs> yeah, you're like getting it. not from her, from me. From me? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Give me a number. I'll find him. We know this on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. You will find I him I just, somewhere. I saw him for a second. Imagine like, he yeah. actually was just an extra. <laughs> just this like gorgeous extra yeah and you're like who's that <laughs> like um, also sorry we have to talk about Stanford I know because he Willie died Garson. in real life it's so sad even seeing him at the funeral gave me chills I, I was know. just like he was looking at the coffin I was like oh my god little did he know but like he knew he had cancer though right during film yeah and I think he had told Sarah Jessica Parker because they were actually like really good friends mm. in real life and then and isn't he I straight think- in real life yeah yeah it's, so, it's such a crazy story and he has story. a son and um so he told her first and then kind of I think towards the end when it was kind of like very obvious that he wasn't well yeah. then he told everyone oh he did tell everyone yeah oh. but like um they had planned for they had a whole storyline for him and everything but obviously like they couldn't finish it no. it's really really so sad. wait they're saying though it's going to be addressed in the season no it's not well not in this, not season, this season anyway um michael patrick king basically was like no we didn't he was like fans know that like, yeah and there's been enough death so far yeah. i loved that he ended up with that other guy i'm forgetting his name damn it anthony anthony, anthony. <laughs> charlotte charlotte's gay bestie i loved that storyline yeah. that they ended up together mm. But that's so sad. The other standout from the episode as well was obviously Samantha. Samantha. Yeah. I um, like that they addressed it straight away. If I've ever seen someone trying to get someone back, I mean, they're obviously yeah. trying to get her to read. Like, they're making her out to be a saint, mm. sending the flowers. But obviously, you know, a lot of Samantha fans are giving out that, like, she's it's being accused of not talking to them because... Sarah Jessica Parker's car, like his dumped car, her he dumped her as, as yeah, her publicist. publicist. Like I even forgot Samantha was her full time publicist. Yeah, like, it wasn't I that much that of well. the storyline when she released the book, but that was like four seasons into seven seasons, so yeah. it's not like that was the whole thing. So I think people were annoyed about that, but sending the flowers, and then obviously I think you we, we did a piece on this. There's rumors that at the end it's going to end with her Carrie sending Samantha a text, being like, 
let's try resolve this mm. like leaving it open for her to come back I think they're very yeah they're very much leaving the window open for Kim Cattrall to come back I don't, I don't think, think she will, she will. I the think she's, she's really said, standing her ground the damage like, has been no. t- how can you sit at like a table like this and do a read through yeah with like daggers in her eyes mm. and it's interesting because I've watched I've said this to you the other day I was watching interviews with Sarah Jessica Parker to be like what's the story like, yeah, what, like happened? what happened no one actually and knows and she what is happened. literally like I have no idea. Like, she's like, it's not how I recall things. We were so close. Did you see Kim Cashall on Piers Morgan? Yeah. So that was kind of when she really spoke yeah. about their feud for the first time yeah. properly. But everyone was kind of like, not really fully sure what actually happened. She still so didn't either. say. She was she's just like, like, she could have well, been nicer. Yeah. And then she was like, we were colleagues. We weren't friends. Mm. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're sworn enemies. Like, how's it gone from, we didn't really get on to like, I'm never rejoining the show mm. ever again. And then remember only a few years ago, like, I think it was like 2017 or something. Kim Cattrall's brother went missing or something. Died. And then, yeah, he mm. died. And then Sarah Jessica Parker, like, sending you love. sent her a comment or something. Yeah. And she was like, how dare you? Yeah, like, she like published the comment and was yeah. like, me and my mother, like, are going through the worst time. That and was that so post strange. Is still there. She did not oh delete God, it. Really? <laughs> still there. But she's making her out to be a bully. It's just weird. Like normally when I've heard stories like this, there's always more stories. So it's like mm. multiple people on set have come out and saying X, Y, Z. No one else has actually said anything yeah. about Sarah Jessica Parker. And I um there was an interview with Chris Noth in um The Guardian a couple of weeks ago, and they asked him about the feud, and he was like, Look, I don't know what happened but he was like I'm very protected of Sarah Jessica yeah. and he said that like she's such a target so he kind of made out that maybe it's all bullshit like it is so true though I feel like Sarah Jessica is one of those Anne Hathaway types where like Everyone just people hates just hate her for some reason but I I think she's like me I'm the Irish Anne Hathaway <laughs> yeah remember we actually said this for the Ali's like the Anne Hathaway of, of Dublin. Ireland <laughs> maybe I'm the Carrie the Sarah, or the Sarah Jessica yeah have maybe. you seen her in the family stone Love yeah, her. Yeah, we were talking about this yeah. story the last time. I feel like people think that's who she is, yeah. though. That she's yeah. incredibly annoying. But she's. But I don't think like she is. So, like, like um, she's not I was saying so nice. this to you the other day. So she. Um, because obviously, like, she kind of took a break from acting yeah. for like a good few years. And she has a very well known shoe shop in New York. And she would be in there, like, behind the till and everything. Just like, like she's people. always kind of come across like that to me, anyway. That a normal, she's, like, humble person. Quite down to earth. Her and Matthew Broderick. Broderick. Yeah. They have a place up in Donegal, isn't it? Donegal, yeah. They're, they're, they're here I, I all the time. I think she's always seemed quite humble and nice to me anyway but I think she does have a target on her back people just yeah. hate her for some reason and I, I just think as well if something was really happening because Kim can't even put it into words herself so that's very confusing yeah but if something genuinely happened on set it's like why haven't more people from mm. the set been like yeah there was this incident where she was shouted at or something there's no specific mm. story and on the Piers Morgan thing as well she was saying like it wasn't about money she never asked for more money but then like there's loads of reports that she did ask for more money yeah. and Sarah Jessica like when she first joined Sex and the City she was the biggest star at yeah. the time in terms and of Hollywood and didn't she executive produce it yeah from well. the beginning so she had now, like they're all, control yeah they're all executive producers of the new series yeah. but yeah that's the thing I think it's unfair to ask for more money when Sarah is like the lead character and she was executive producing the whole thing yeah. But I remember because obviously you're not that But I remember when Sex and the City actually came out. There was like war over it. Yeah, because it was such a like a so sexual. Show. I remember the ad for it like on RT whenever it was whatever TV station it the got fact launched that they on here. Even had sex and the oh sorry like, it was title. Sky at the time I think yeah. And I remember the ad was like I feel like someone in a pharmacy asking for the morning after pill or asking for condoms. It was something like that. And I remember mm. my mum being like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> what is sex this? in the city? Like this is ridiculous." You know, the whole idea was like slut slutting around. Yeah. So that's kind of what it felt like. Yeah. And then when it launched, it just became a whole other thing. But mm. I remember there being lots of like concerns about this new show coming out that yeah. promotes sex. How wild is that now? Like so it's the wild. most normal thing in the world. But back then it was like, whoa. Yeah. And I think for Sarah Jessica Parker, like, do you notice that in all the scenes, you never see her naked. Mm. You never see her breasts. Like she had a very, very strict contract. Yeah. The other girls didn't have the same. Like, so yeah. she was oh, like, no, I am never like doing nudity. On. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, girl. <laughs> Sorry. Off we go. But like Kim Cattrall's career is sex in the city. So it's like, how yeah, much can you I hate Sarah of, Jessica I Parker? I understand that there was definitely some push and pull there because yeah. 
Carrie's obviously she's essentially the lead character yeah. of the show, but There's it's, no show it's all her. about the four of them. Yeah. But then Samantha is kind of like the second biggest, I think she yeah, was. She's in such the an show. opposite to Carrie, and it's like the, yeah. she represents a different sort of woman. Yeah. And to the, the like, girls. a lot of people would argue that the show would be nothing without Samantha and Yeah, I wouldn't argue thing. that now to be fair. I haven't missed her so far. Like when yeah. I saw the little card, I was like, that's so cute. But do I really care about Samantha? She's 10 years older than them now, right? So age 60, still riding half of New York and not wanting to settle down. Her one liners, though, they're they so were good. very like, good. I, I do miss them. But I think that they're kind of making up for her being gone mm. by like Carrie doing the podcast and being pushed yeah. to talk about sex and that kind of stuff. I think they're going to bring in kind of. I'm sorry, do you know what things. wrecked my head about the episode? Brady. Riding. Oh, yeah. His girlfriend. I thought that was a bit... In the next intense. room. Yeah. Slamming up. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know any parent that'd be like, oh. I'm also just so used to seeing Brady as like a child. child. As well. Can like, I ask oh, a really vital, <gasps> serious, serious question here, okay? When... No, I thought I've... This has kept me up at night. Oh, God. When Miranda had Brady, his name was Brady Hobbs, but then she married Steve. So is his name Brady Brady? Because his name is Steve Brady. <laughs> oh, my God. No, like, I this never kept thought me up that. at night. It was only the other day when I was oh watching it. I was like, but when, when they got married... Because she named him Brady to be like, Steve, I want you to have a part of his name. But now is his name now Brady is Brady. Brady Brady. Or is he Brady Hobbs Brady? BhB, <laughs> BHB. That sounds like ketchup or something. Like, like a brand I think we need to go on a fan forum and figure this out because I'm no, concerned. I'm sure someone's figured maybe, it out on Reddit. Maybe or something he's like. riding your one because he's been so heavily bullied in school. Like his <laughs> yeah. name is Brady Brady. Like, people are calling me Brady, Brady. But he's very annoying in it. Yeah, I already don't like him. But I get it. They want to have a juxtaposition between they used to be like mm. that and now they're old. Also, can we bring up the fact that like Lily keeps ruining Carrie's oh, life? Oh my God. I saw those <laughs> like, memes of like in the movie when Big is calling, she like closes it and puts yeah, it in the bag. Yeah, she closes the little cupcake And then in this season, she's like, like, oh, come to my recital and Big is dead. And like the way she was so like, she's an incredible piano player. So amazing. <laughs> so good. But the intensity of her playing the piano and then that him killed, on that the killed, Peloton, That killed like, Big alone. He probably heard it was like, oh. Yeah, it was like, oh my God. Heard the music. <laughs> but are you such a, you made such a good point earlier about how Big didn't even go. Like, fuck. I know. Oh, and like the minute that happened <sighs> when she was like oh I'm going to Lily's recital and he wasn't even like oh should I go he was like oh bye you're yeah, like imagine being married to someone like that <laughs> such I asshole. dated someone like that before and it was such a nightmare because then if I wanted to actually go to something let's say it was a family thing he'd be like in the worst mood mm. the whole night he'd be like oh why are we and here because uh, remember it was brought up in the movies as well the way he didn't want to go to that premiere and she mm. was like put your shoes on we're yeah. going to the but premiere imagine being married to someone like that yeah no. Like I'd much Especially when you've no kids And it's just the two no. of you Like Get your bloody suit like, on And go get to Get it dinner. on Like Stop smoking your cigars Yeah What's uh, Charlotte's husband's name I can't believe I've forgotten it Um Oh Virgo <laughs> We're like no. no So Golden Harry Harry Harry, yes, Harry Goldenblatt yeah. I love him. I actually love him yeah. as a character. I think he's so he's nice. He's like a good man. And their marriage is like good. Yeah. And it's strong. Yeah. But I am interested to see the secondary characters. You know, like she has a friend. Now they called her the Black Charlotte at the yeah. funeral. It's, <laughs> I thought it was really funny. But like when you look back at the series, this was one thing I kind of took note of because obviously Krista Davis has adopted black kids. And in her interview with Jada Pinkett Smith, she was saying how little represented like black people are and stuff so when I saw that character come in I was like how mad is it that there was no black characters in the show mm, yeah. like New York as well it's not like yeah. it was Kerry like there would have always been mm. and different it was races. only like 25 years I know ago. so I think so. they might be making up for lost time remember we spoke yeah. about this how the series just like Friends wouldn't really like hit the same way yeah yeah and have you seen that clip of her where she's like sometimes I remember love is like the war in Northern Ireland yeah. have you ever heard that clip yeah. and she's like everyone just wants to be on the same side and I'm like what you've just put all the troubles into one little sentence yeah and it was so casually thrown in there and she was like walking down the street just being like, like bye <laughs> like some of the stuff that was, was said like, in the sorry. series I was like excuse me yeah so I'm interested to see that and then also um the character of the girl the the person she's the podcast with oh, um yeah. i think that character is a non-binary mm. character and i do think they're yeah, probably going to help charlotte's daughter i think that's probably going to happen yeah. i'm interested to see the whole miranda going to school thing that's the only storyline i do not care about 
what's the story? I get like? why they're doing it though, because like how many returning like to is, education? Yeah, yeah, returning to education, and it's like, oh my god, you're in this class with like she's just so. I actually saw it was Laura Cunningham tweeted about it. And do you follow her on Twitter? Yeah, and uh, she was kind of giving out that the characters are so the older ones are like really fumbly, and I do agree with that and Miranda when she's around the lecturer she's like oh and like dropping books and everything yeah. it's just like why is she she's like a leading corporate lawyer like yeah I did think that was a bit weird but, but I guess it's interesting it's like because nerves. the series is based like after the pandemic has obviously happened yeah. so it's bringing all that kind of and that's what um, makes it really it. current as well I do like that they mention it because remember yeah. when it first came out that the show was going to um, acknowledge the pandemic and yeah. everyone was giving out about it and I was like why well, it makes sense. everyone and even the way she said like oh you know it started the lockdown it makes you feel understood in your own life because sometimes yeah. you're watching TV now and there's no one wearing masks and there's no one testing positive for COVID and it's yeah. like I do get it it's nice to have an escape but it's also nice to be like oh yeah I went through that yeah. I listened to music every day or I had to get a Peloton because yeah. I couldn't go to the gym like stuff like that mm. so I do think that's actually really I good I think people were worried that maybe they were going to kill someone off by them having COVID or something like that like or I think on a fucking if, bike I think if Big had died from COVID people would have been like hang you on you would have been high risk though yeah you know True. a heart condition yeah, but it's interesting, like, I mean, are all the rules in New York gone completely? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Because in this series, they're like, COVID, goodbye, it's over. But there's know, hand and yeah. sanitizer the odd time I've seen. Yeah, they're still like, ooh, social distance. Um, the other thing I saw people kind of giving out about was, you know, when she was like, I'm on Instagram. And they were like, Instagram? How's that going? But I'm just like, I get it, though. That age range would definitely be like Instagram. Yeah. Like, you know, one detail I actually love that they put in so you know the way she's saying that she's like I have Instagram she has yeah. her phone out and she has an old iPhone oh does she it's an older iPhone and you know the way in the series and in the movies she mm. always had that old flip phone even yeah, when there so was like older normal version. proper phones oh my god I love that they put I in that know, detail how did you know it was, I just it was noticed an older it. make yeah, it was like an iPhone bloody like seven or something. You know, there's a, like an iPhone twelve. Oh, iPhone seven. I like, just noticed it's that. Like a Nokia like, thirty three ten. You're like an iPhone seven. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but I just I love still. The that. I know we spoke about this last time. There, th- there is a market for a flip phone. Like I would buy one. I would buy a flip phone with no internet on it. I think that's gonna be the new cool you thing. You would last about thirty minutes. But I'd love not <laughs> like, having, I mean, I wouldn't use it Monday to Friday, but like a weekend phone or something. You know, yeah, one where it's like, like Hello. if you need to call me, grant, but if you want to WhatsApp me, good luck. Good I don't want to know about the, e- yeah. well, I'm sure they could make a flip phone with internet on it, but I do think we're getting into this area where all that stuff's going to be uncool. I just think the cool yeah. thing is going to be not being on the internet now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did like that. I'm interested to see about the podcast. Didn't really feel that part. Like, I, I think it's going to get better. Mm-hmm. your man's right but uh, also she needs to open up more and talk more about yeah. it but I was unsure when I when I read about the storyline like there was a podcast there was this I was a bit like eh but no it's definitely exceeded it all my makes expectations sense. yeah yeah. and I think if that was the writing just for the first two episodes I think mm-hmm. the rest of the season is going to be amazing but do you think there would be a season two? it depends how hot I mean if she ends up with Aiden for example I don't know if they do another season. So Michael Patrick King, he was asked about it in an interview and he was like, the way I do things, he was like, I will always wrap it up that it can be finished. But yeah, he was like, obviously if there's demand continued. for another season, I'll do it. Like, Who else would be killed next time? <laughs> like, God. there'd be another one. Yeah. But no, I do think he's done a really good job of bringing current issues to the forefront because yeah. before the issue was literally a woman wanting to have sex because it was such a big thing at the time yeah. whereas now you couldn't there's so many shows where everyone's just having sex all the time yeah. so I think that's why people were like what are the issues going to be this time but like losing your husband is a massive massive storyline yeah like yeah. can you think of any other sort of TV or movie other than like PS I Love You that like genuinely mm. deals with like a woman losing her husband yeah like and I loved good. how they dealt with the fallout of it and everything and they like showed her and like Miranda coming over and she said she like mascara everywhere I and know. stuff and like really because like with series like that it can, they can kind of do time Gloss jumps over it. and yeah. stuff and be like oh my god then big diet and then all of a sudden it, they like skip the funeral I yeah, like how they, they went spent into so much time on the funeral and get they, I think the they owed that to the fans yeah, as I well know. yeah but going through the process proper, yeah also Charlotte like sure Stop crying. That's that's how like what I was saying earlier on, how they make the characters flawed because in that mm. episode I was like, Charlotte, shut You wanted to get your bag and smack up. her across the head. Because like, she comes across so annoying, so literally annoying. making it all about herself. But like I oh, 
God, I would feel so bad too. If I was like, come to my child's recital and then they died, I'd be like, shit. Mm. Yeah. But it's so again, bad. he didn't have to die. Um, before we wrap with sex and city stuff, we obviously have to talk about Peloton because the bike that he was on before he had a heart attack, the bike. people keep thinking that Peloton like killed him and they went down in their market shares, all the sort of stuff. They were like, shit, this is really bad for the brand. And then boom, what, three, four days later? Yeah. An ad with Chris not, and they were like, and just like that. And it was Ryan Reynolds doing the yeah. voiceover. He's like, and just like that, he's alive. He's alive. <laughs> like, I, five million dollars, so I'd say he got paid for that, minimum. Yeah. Like, it, it makes so much sense though. And they they had obviously kind of figured this all out before they, the episode even aired because you know the way in the episode he keeps saying about Allegra yeah and the woman is obviously in the ad as yeah. well mm-hmm. so they obviously figured this out with Peloton beforehand I don't know it I think it was hand in hand with the show I know I think it was reactive I don't think they had a plan at all nothing no I think your one Allegra is a real person from Peloton oh, no, she is. yeah and yeah. she was just in the episode so they just hired her to do the shoot I think it was all completely reactive I think they I literally know. shot it I think because he Monday. kept saying Allegra in the episode he was like oh I'm spending tonight with Allegra and then he he said it like three times but I'm sure it was product placement to have Peloton in it yeah but that's what I mean mm. like was it a pre-planned thing I think it might have been I don't know that's me tinfoil hat that's your tinfoil hat yeah. I don't my personal opinion is I don't think this will happen because they seemed so panicked when it all came out and then they were like because they probably weren't told the storyline no one knew the storyline it was like the biggest secret I don't think Peloton knew that he was going to die how why would they randomly it's like if they had a series where someone drank a coke and then died they're not going to ring coke and be like this character dies after (laughs) a drink like I think that's my feeling on it but no I think but either way very good yeah very very good turnaround and like Chris Noth he was paid five million just to be in one episode was that how much he was paid for the episode? Yeah. And definitely five million for that ad. So he just made ten million yeah. dollars. Easy. Basically. Um, moving on, we need to talk about succession. Another yeah. obsession. Oh, oh, obsession. Obsession succession of mine. You which were I forced to get you to get into to watch this for ages and I finally did, and it's so good. I'm obsessed. I know. It's so the best. It's one of the best TV sh- series of all time. I'm going to yeah, put so that out there. spoilers for the finale of season three. Spoilers. Stop watching. Stop watching. If you want. Yeah, Everyone's like, watched, I can't listen to this podcast yeah, at all. Like, um, if you're not up to date on television, just jog on. on. So basically, Succession is a fictional series about a fictional media family. But mm-hmm. it's very clearly based on or inspired by Rupert Murdoch's yeah. family. Who own, like, every news station, newspaper in the world kind of thing. So I loved it from the get-go because I'm so interested and so would you be in the industry anyway, the media industry. But then, yeah. storyline aside, they could actually be working in a canteen and I would still watch it because yeah. it's the characters. They're all so interesting. So interesting and kind of in a different way to Sex City, but they're all so heavily flawed. Mm. But you're still kind of like rooting for them. You, you kind know they're of, psychotic. It's a very mutual hate-love relationship yeah. with all of them. And I love the writing in it. So you know what's so mad is that um, Adam McKay... And Will Farrell are like exclusive producers. producers. Yeah. Like it's so funny when you think how far Adam McKay has come from Anchorman to now mm. he's in that new movie Don't Look Up with yeah. Meryl Streep and Leonardo DiCaprio. But every time I see their names I'm always like God I keep forgetting that they're a part mm. of it. But Logan Roy I'm obsessed. I want a jumper that has his face on it going fuck off. Yeah. Like Brian Cox is like expert at playing an evil boss. See, I'd never seen him in anything else before. Oh, so good. He was in Game of Thrones, is it? Yeah, he uh, he was actually a really nice person in Game of Thrones. Oh, was but he? like I'm just saying in succession he's like Oh my brilliant. god. I've actually watched a good few entries with him recently. I don't know if you saw one. So obviously one of the big things in the news the last two weeks was the New Yorker profile on of Jeremy Strong. Jeremy Strong. Did you read all of it? Yeah. Like it's complicated because I don't think it was a hit piece per mm. se. Like, I think it's all very factually correct. Yeah. But you can tell that he is obsessed with the craft. Mm-hmm. Even, it's not even the quotes they included, but even the writer, Michael Schumann, he's like, he texted me after this. He texted me. Like, he's constantly, like, yeah. checking in with him and telling him things and giving Just him kind of made him his number. a bit of a freak, like, <laughs> pretty much. But, like, a lot of actors are that serious. Yeah, but I think yeah. the big thing that people are really upset about is that they made him seem difficult to work with. Mm. So, like, when they were talking about the trial of the Chicago... Or what was that? Trial of the Chicago 7. Seven. Yeah. 
that he wanted real tear gas in the scene mm. and they were like we obviously can't for health and safety yeah. reasons and then kind of the take home like taking it too far yeah that's what the take home was but then Aaron Sorkin came out and released a statement he was like no like I just wanted to give that example to show how serious he is but it just didn't come across that way and then what was really interesting is that his own co-stars in Succession obviously don't like him. Yeah. Like they were all like, yeah, he has a method, but, and Brian Cox was almost like his real life dad. He was like, I'm worried about him. Mm. Like, I don't know what that does to him. Um, what Kieran Culkin as well, he's kind of like, oh, there was times we'd shoot and he'd randomly ad lib and do a full speech yeah, and, and they'd be like, anything. not Which rehearse anything. Which would be so annoying. Not rehearsing is so annoying. Like I've been on sets before where, ad lib is allowed and it's grand but like ad lib is like a word yeah it's like you know what i mean wink wink like adding in a wink adding in a joke yeah. it's not a full like a whole different scene. Yeah. yeah and like when you're doing comedy specifically a lot of those shows would never be rehearsed because they're like let's just go and bounce off each other but for dramas mm. you have to obviously yeah. rehearse you don't know how someone's gonna look at you or if you're gonna cry all that sort of stuff um, so I watched this interview then after, I don't know if you saw it, um, with Brian Cox and they talk about the New Yorker profile and they were like, look, he's a great actor, Jeremy Strong, he's amazing. And he's like, what do you think? And he didn't like back down. He oh, was really? still like, it concerns me the way he works and the way he acts with the cast. And like, you know, in the piece, they're saying like he wouldn't go into the makeup trailer unless there was no one in there. Yeah. And I only noticed it after I read the New Yorker profile. One of my friends was like, you do realize he's never done like group press with them. And I was like, never clicked with me. I like interviews, he's never there. That's really he weird. He does them by himself. Now, it reminded me of, did you ever hear the story of, um, you know, in Suicide Squad, Jared mm. Leto. You remember he never came yeah, back. Yeah, and it's like method acting. He like sent rats yeah. to the cast to freak them out. Mm. And I think maybe with Jeremy, he wants to be hated so much by the family that he's making mm. them hate them in real life. But like, this is what I always find so funny because I've acted in the past. I'm not a fucking expert, but like method acting, like if you have to do that, you're obviously not the best actor. Like you're acting. Yeah. Pretend to hate someone. You don't need to yeah. live in hatred for seven years. But like a good few actors do that. Daniel Day-Lewis Dan- is yeah, the main one. He's the main one. And I've met him and he is the most serious man on the planet. Yeah. Like, crazy serious there's not that many but he's it, a really I, big one I think it's like an old school thing because you know the way at the start of that um piece about mm. Jeremy Strong mm-hmm. they say that like he really idolized these like old school actors yeah, and a lot of those actors. old school actors were method actors but I remember like with Lincoln have you seen Lincoln that Daniel Day-Lewis yeah, plays Abraham yeah. Lincoln in it I remember reading that like this is so random but for like six months he lived without no phones yeah his poor wife <laughs> yeah she's like, she's like hello like he go that's why apparently he stopped because he was like the effect it's having on my family because yeah. he literally for a year delved deep but I feel like I maybe understand it a little bit more when it's a movie it's a once off thing like Heath yeah, Ledger and series. The Dark Knight like he really delved deep mm. into the point where he accidentally overdosed yeah. do you know what I mean um, but with Jeremy, it's odd that it's for the series. Have you also seen The Gentleman, the Guy Ritchie movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He plays the weirdest, not serious character. Oh, my God, character. is he in that? Yeah, he's the weird little guy that Matthew McConaughey is trying to do the deal with all the time. Oh, my God, I didn't even and realize that. And he has little glasses on and he's like this little sissy in it. And he's all, oh. he's getting in trouble and he double crosses them. Anyway, in the New Yorker profile, they mention it and Michael Schumann says, I was told I'm not allowed to mention it. Oh, so there's God. a lot of moments in the piece where you're like, like uh, you could say it's hippies, but there's too many things he does in it that makes him seem like an asshole. Yeah. Like literally mm. difficult to work with. It's not yeah. that he's a bad person, but I mean asshole in terms of working life. Like imagine going to a set like being a- like, where is Jeremy? <laughs> and then he comes in and he does an essay that wasn't in the script and you're like, yeah, and you're like what's, what's going what? on? And then he storms off and doesn't speak to you for two weeks. Yeah. Like I would be like, why is he on the show? He's uh, He also started off as a theatre actor as well. I feel he's like very a lot of those serious. Theatre actors are like that. Yeah, they Where really it's like are. They went to Julia now, I still much. really enjoyed the New Yorker piece, and I don't think it was hippies, but it's it's weird seeing the reaction online, like Jessica Chastain, Anne Hathaway, our fave. They've our all fave. Aaron Sorkin. A lot of people have come out now being like, "No, Defending he was the him. most professional person on set." But I don't think Michael Schumann said he wasn't professional. Mm. He he's was almost just, too professional. He's almost too in professional some instances. But it was interesting when the New Yorker piece came out. It was right before the finale. Mm-hmm. And in the second last episode, um, it looked like he was dead. Mm-hmm. So he was like yeah. falling off his little water thing, uh, drowning. 
And then when I saw the New Yorker profile, I was like, maybe he does die. I was like, maybe this is him, like, mic drop, good luck, this is who I am, see ya. Mm. So I was actually surprised that he, absolute spoiler alert, uh, didn't die. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, when I was watching the end of that episode where, like, you know, it looks like he's pretty yeah. much dead. I, a part of me was just like, no, nah, they're not gonna they can't kill him off. off. There's just too much to work with with yeah. these characters still. But it's so funny because the way the finale episode went, right? I had read a piece. <gasps> in Such a good episode. So good. I didn't see it coming. Like Emmys everywhere. Emmys, Emmys all over the place. Everywhere. You know the guy who plays Tom didn't get nominated for a Golden Globe. But no. that episode only just came out. So they obviously based it on the last season. Oh, okay. and I was like, no. Do you know that scene where he finds that he's not going to jail and he jumps all over the filing cabinet? Yeah. I was like, that's a Golden Globe nomination for me. Yeah, like he's so in good. In office, so, so good. good. Um, but anyway, in so yeah, before I saw the final episode, there was an. Uh, I think it might have been in Vulture as well. There was some article anyway talking about if this was real life, and in the the piece they were like a company like Waystar Royco wouldn't be the big company like Netflix is. Mm-hmm. So like in real life they'd probably be bought bought by Netflix by now and then literally the episode happened and I was like oh my god Mm. that's literally what's happening Yeah. so the writers are so spot on because it's true like legacy media is kind of over that's why they're constantly what's not that it's over but in terms of advertising and they're like an IPO company so they've like public shares and stuff everyone wants to be the next streaming platform so Gojo is obviously Netflix in the show and Alexander Starsgard is really good as your man on a ride um, but I was surprised because he's like the king of the castle sort of thing. I never thought he'd want to step down. So that mm. storyline shook me. Yeah, I loved it because I was kind of, I was like, how are they going to end this season? I just couldn't kind of predict it. Yeah. Like usually you kind of be able to like Yeah, you can't with succession. But like you cannot predict what's going to happen. Do you know what I thought was going to happen? And it's weird that it hasn't happened, but it does go back to something Brian Cox said in an interview. I watched the same one. When they were talking about the show and how evil he is, he said that before he said yes to the character, he asked the writer, does Logan Roy love his children? And he, he was like, yeah. And he was like, when I knew that, he was like, I was able to play the character quite differently. So, you know, in that final episode, like when he tells um, Roman to fuck off and play with yeah. his dick. And then he's like, I'm, I'm only messing. He's like, come. He's like, because obviously Kendall nearly died for a second. He's like shit like I yeah, do love my like kids instantly a dickhead and then he's yeah. like oh actually no. actually I need to change who but I am it's so like that with the entire royal Roy family because yeah. they're all so horrible to each other horrible. in so many different but ways they definitely love each other but they definitely love each other and that scene where Kendall starts breaking down and telling them that he had killed yeah. that uh, waiter boy and stuff yeah. Emmys all over that entire scene now, the way he breaks down. I won't lie. I wa- I was a little bit bored by it. I loved There was that parts scene. of the scene I loved. Like I liked that the three of them were together, even the visuals of it, like her with her hand on him and all that stuff. But I thought it was a bit self-indulgent. It's probably because I read the New Yorker piece. Because then when he was just like and then I was like, no, oh no, we I, know he I killed him. I thought it was bra- I just thought it was I such don't know. a good scene. But sorry, that's what I was gonna say. The reason I was saying he he loves him is important. I thought when Kendall was like firing all these shots and the FBI, blah blah blah. Why didn't they just release or like get that him caught for killed. murdering? Yeah. Well, he didn't murder him, but like being I a part of that. I kept thinking that was going to happen. But then I think that's why it's important that we understand that he actually does love his kids. Mm. It's like he doesn't want him to suffer. But then he also was happy for him to take the the Jim Brown and, the like, last season, go, to, go jail. to jail and yeah. take the rap for something like he did. Yeah. But it was interesting because I just didn't see so much of it happening. I was talking to my friend about the other day. And I was like, Tom. And then they were talking about the episode before, you know, when Kendall tries to get him to come over. That was three episodes before. And he was like, I've never seen Logan lose. Mm. It's like, I should have noticed the little glint in his eye that episode because I think he started to realize Logan is where the two. Yeah, yeah. But also as well, when they were having dirty talk, Shiv and Tom, I think he was kind of like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, I think... It's, my sister it's about kind it. of been, like, sprinkled into certain episodes where he's kind of getting a bit fucked off yeah. with her. And he like, was going to go to prison. Yeah. He was tasting horrible meals because he was like, this is what I have to get yeah. eat. She I was love like, his character. She was like, so oh, Tom, much. whatever, get over it. I love yeah. Greg, too. Love. Uh, I love uh, their uh, little uh, duo. Yeah. They're so good. But did you see the tweet I shared? I think it was yesterday. Um, It was like saying how this uh, Greek mythology character pushed his wife down the stairs and then he castrated his like uh, servant and married him instead. Remember that episode he talks about it and he was like, I'd castrate you and marry you, Greg. Oh, yeah. 
But then that was like three. <laughs> if no one watches the show, then it's like, yeah, what? like what? But then when you cut to this episode, at the end, he mm. literally does that. Yeah. He shoves Shiv off and he asks Greg to come with him mm. and be a part of the new team. What's it? Do you make a deal with the devil. Castrate your balls, you know? But I'm interested to see what's going to happen. And as well, like I read a review on it about how like earlier on when Tom was wearing the white suit, he looked like this angelic character. But then when he's in the house, he actually looks like a mobster. Yeah. And he's like, everything okay? You're like, ah! So to explain what actually happened, because I saw a few people being like, I don't actually understand what actually okay. happened in the end. So when Logan and his wife, so uh, Roman, Kendall yeah. and Shiv's mom got divorced in their divorce settlement, she basically made this deal that they had this super majority, majority con- thing. Yeah, the control of the company. So it basically means that like Logan can't really make like big massive decisions like a merger with Gojo. Yeah, he can't sell the majority control without their without okay. Without their yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. And so when they kind of found out that Logan was basically going to fuck them over yeah. and Overboard. be bought out by Gojo, which would essentially kind of kick them out. And yeah, because like, he doesn't care for them. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, no, fuck this. We're going to use our super majority and push him out and basically tell all the shareholders that he's too old and that he's like not able to do the job and anymore. And talk about the time he got the urinary tract infection yeah. and like all that stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. So they were like, went in all guns blazing, and be like, fuck you. Yeah. And then he was like, no, fuck you. Here's your mother on ah! the phone. And she's just renegotiated the divorce agreement. So your super majority is, is gone. gone. Yeah. And... They were just devastated. And like the way they all acted that like so, the way that Roman scene is was Emmy. like do it because you love me kind and of he's thing. like fuck off. And like we've never even seen that kind of emotion from Roman. And Roman has never like, gone against him either. No. And he was really like dad. Like yeah. he's like come on. I thought that was really interesting but yeah a few people said to me but like what happened? What do you mean how do they know? I was like well Tom told him yeah. about the super majority thing. And the moment where the moment. Shiv looks at Tom and then Logan puts a no dead and she's like and my like husband pot. has betrayed me but like right too like she yeah. treats him like shit and I my sister was like what does this mean for them are they gonna get divorced and I was like no she is going to she's be in gonna, love with yeah. him because yeah. she has daddy issues and mm. she is treated like shit by her dad and I'm telling you she's gonna have newfound respect for Tom mm. and they're probably gonna have a really strong like I think his character is gonna massively change next season but I'm it very even excited. shows the, like because the way she obviously sees the moment realises that he's massively betrayed her and then he comes in he's kind of like oh like are you all right kind of thing and like a normal person would be like what the fuck i just saw that you like but they're had so that moment, used to being so terrible just like mom fucked us yeah it's like no you fucked us yeah tom so i'm Back interested up. to see what's gonna happen next season because if gojo if the buyout happens that means alexander Starscar is gonna be in it a lot more mm-hmm. so that's interesting yeah. Um, but like where do they all fit where is the drama yeah. where is the contrast where is the tension like there must be something like I I never know and then they do yeah. it and it's so good that's why it makes it such a good show but like they literally have nothing because the messed up thing is which I think people didn't get this part either because they went to try to fuck him now he's like well fuck you yeah. so yeah. if they hadn't gone he was going to give Roman and Shiv something to do in the new company yeah. whereas I think now he's like now he's going to be like good luck <laughs> okay. and Roman was meant to be the new CEO mm. Kendall is like, yeah. Like, I mean, nothing's changed there. Now, they do oh, definitely God. have shares in the company, though, because you know the way Logan offered to Offer buy? To buy yeah. So I'm sure they'll get something, but it must be so minute in terms of they want their career. And then when you- Well, I think, because you could actually see it on the sheet of paper uh, of the shares. I, <laughs> the things that you like, spot. I think the shares- iPhone 7 there Kendall's in the background. Shares, <laughs> Kendall's shares amounted to like 5 million or something. But to them, that's fuck Oh, all. that's People fuck that are all. used to going on private jets They need everywhere. 100 million a year. Yeah. And then like that moment where Logan is like, because when build they're your own like, fucking yeah, pile. they're like, what are we going to do? And he's like, build your own pile. Yeah, they're like, they're like, because Kendall what? was like, what are you going to do to sit on your billions? He was like, yeah. yeah. And then it was kind of a weird <laughs> so sideline storyline about how they think he's trying to have another child. I was like, I don't think. Yeah. I think about, that's when they realized the, the maca root or whatever is in his smoothie. In his smoothie. Yeah. Connor is an interesting character as well. I don't, I don't care for him. But, I don't really care for him either. But like, but it was interesting scene when Kendall was like, I'm the oldest brother. And he's like, yeah, he's I'm, like, I'm literally I the oldest. I was born you first. And I actually really, I thought so it was going to play more of a part in this season. So it would probably play more of a part next season. But I thought it was very interesting that whole presidential episode. Like, that was mm. clearly a mirror reflection of the Trump 
election yeah, that yeah. someone terrible was going to get a lot of airtime. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's just see what happens next season. But like yeah. Shiv gave up her entire political career to come back and work for her dad and he promised her to see he promised yeah. her all these things she's been shafted she's been massively shafted but, but yeah, yeah now they've no i mean i wonder what their salary was they're probably all on like 20 million yeah. a year on top of it i'd say they're like gone yeah. but then like how does tom fit in i need to understand like is tom gonna be put on the board now because logan's gonna say he has to be because he's loyal mm. Ah. it's such an the show in itself is such an interesting mirror into the extremely wealthy that are like the one percent celebrities yeah the one percent yeah like the super yachts like you know the super yacht that they're in in the yeah current like last latest season like that is a big ass i love shiv's uh fashion as well yeah i'm really into what she was kind of saying that like towards the end of the season her fashion kind of changed but people were kind of say like suggesting that it would kind of was changing to make you not like her even more oh really yeah i thought like the last outfit made her look quite like weak and feminine where she's yeah. normally in her like pants Power suit. and she's i think it was like to reflect the change of dynamic between mm. her and tom yeah i'm so excited though to see what we're happens. gonna have to wait for ages for it to come back i know i remember like i got really into that it happens. like in the pandemic oh we're gonna finish up soon um in the pandemic and um then it was like, I thought I was like binge watching it, not knowing that the new season hadn't been made. Yeah. This is like a year and a half ago. And then it was like coming in a year. I was like, yeah, you're <gasps> like oh, it's going to be, tw- it's going to be late 2022. Like, yeah. Yeah. Devastated. And um, before we go, we didn't get to talk about Selling Sunset, but delighted that that's back. And I loved the drama. Yeah. Was obsessed. But I wanted to just say about Dancing with the Stars coming back. Do, 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 do. I'm so excited it's back. So excited, so excited it's back. I love Nikki. Love Jen. We obviously broke the exclusive weeks ago that it was coming back. But they finally, finally confirmed it. Loving the people on the list. So El- Paralympian Ellen Keane. Love her. I've yeah. always followed her on Twitter. She's so nice. Kathy Kelly, Erica Cody. There's a really good Such mix. Such a good lineup. Yeah. Really good mix. Um, and then Matthew McNabb from Love Island. Yeah. Like they've gotten really good people this year. Nina Carberry. Like I feel mm-hmm. like they've got someone from every single sector. Yeah. Of and it's like kind of for all ages as well. Like the yeah. likes of Matthew McNabb, Erica Cody will kind of bring in the younger audience. Totally. And then like, you know, there's I'm so many. I'm excited. You know who I'm excited? I'm excited to see is Angus McGrenna. Oh my God. Like we they have, have to, to have like, some sort of moment. There has to, to be a dance that. where he's like powdering his face. <laughs> yeah. Like honestly, they have he's to such do a that. loved character as yeah, well. Really like just is. as a person, people love him. Yeah. He's kind of like the male Anne Doyle. Like you want to get mm. behind him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I think the producers did very well with like casting the. No, they picked really well this, this year. year. It's very very good. Um, and... Granny Show as well. It's good to see her back. Yeah, I think um, she's one of the kind of biggest. Well, names. don't the bookies have her down? Like. To win, Which she'll probably win, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. But I'm delight. I'm really, really delighted that it's back because I think yeah. it was really, really hard for them to like not have the show. And remember as well, um, the, that was one of the first shows. Do you remember this that cut their audience when mm. we was getting to the lockdown? We didn't yeah. know what was happening. And I remember Lottie Ryan won that year, and they had to do the uh, semi final and the final in the one night. Yeah, and they were it was no audience and it was mm. empty. I remember like crying watching yeah. that finale. I was like, what's happening in the yeah. world? And it was really sad that it wasn't able to go ahead last year as well because obviously it's such a big show. It creates so many jobs. I know. Yeah, like, from lighting to the choreography to the makeup to the stylists. Yeah, yeah it's a really and big production in the entertainment industry yeah. at the moment. But like, there's more so names many. to be revealed, right? So I think there's one more. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. Must excited. be someone big if they're waiting. Yeah. I don't know. Is it Chris Knotts on a Peloton? <laughs> Imagine sponsored by Peloton, the new series of Dancing with the Stars. And he's like, I'm back, oh baby. Oh my God. <laughs> and just like that, I took the dance floor. Um, but we'll leave it there for this. We, we were going to talk about our big shows for next year, but we are doing a wrap up episode um, at yeah. the end that's going to go out the week of New Year's Eve and we're going to talk about the biggest stories of the year. So we might mention some of the kind of TV stuff coming up. Yeah. Uh, but just a reminder again, this episode of the Gosscast has been sponsored by Irish-owned CBD company, Greenheart CBD. Don't forget, you can log on to greenheartcbd.e right now to shop their entire range. And remember, they have their 12 days of Christmas promotion going on on Instagram so you can win over there. So thanks so much for listening and watching. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,